2022 Land Rover Defender. Is it worth buying one over other off-road SUVs? That's what we're gonna find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. I think it's pretty fair to say that next to the Range Rover, the Defender might just be the most iconic and authentic model that you can buy in the Land Rover lineup. It has a rich history stretching back many decades and it represents everything that Land Rover is known for and best at. The latest version created quite the stir when it hit the market a few years back, becoming more luxurious and technologically advanced than any Land Rover in the past. Even though it is a lot more advanced and complicated than any Defender of the past, it hasn't really given up any of its off-road capability. If anything, this is the most capable version of the Defender that Land Rover has ever made. The question though is, is it a better off-road SUV than other options on the market like the Jeep Wrangler, the Ford Bronco, or the Toyota 4Runner? And how does it compare against other similar luxury SUVs? Well, make sure to stick around to the end of the video because that's what we're going to find out. Now, though the Defender is obviously designed for off-roading and hitting the trails, I'm mostly going to review it in the real world on normal roads to see what it's like to live with on a daily basis. Pretty much the way every single owner is going to be driving their Defender 90% of the time. For 2022, the Defender comes in two basic versions, the 90 and the 110, which basically differ in terms of size and the number of doors that you get. The one that I'm testing here is the Defender 90, which is the shorter wheelbase with only two doors, and that's arguably the most authentic version of the Defender. Because of its smaller size, lighter weight, and shorter wheelbase, it has better off-road capability with a better breakover angle and wheel articulation for handling tricky terrain. So that is the better version to go with if you're primarily going to use your Defender off-road. But even though the 90 might have slightly better off-road capability thanks to its smaller size, I'm not sure whether it's the Defender to go with. The reality is, is that the majority of buyers are gonna to wanna to go with the 110 thanks to its more spacious interior, four doors, and a much larger cargo area too. It is a pretty practical and versatile SUV that has all the space that a typical SUV buyer would want. Now, in addition to having a choice between different body styles, you also have a few different drivetrain options to consider as well. In some markets, you can get the Defender with a plug-in hybrid drivetrain, and there's also the option of a supercharged V8 engine with over 500 horsepower as well. Most buyers, however, are going to want to consider either the P300 or P400 models, which come with either a turbocharged four-cylinder engine or a turbo inline-six mild hybrid. The P300 gets a turbo four-cylinder that makes close to 300 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque with an eight-speed automatic transmission and four-wheel drive. It does have a decent amount of power and is a pretty good option for those who are looking to save a bit of money. For those who don't mind spending a little bit more, the P400 gets an inline-six engine that produces close to 400 horsepower and just over 400 pound-feet of torque. It also comes matched to the same eight-speed automatic transmission and four-wheel drive system. Now this is a pretty interesting engine. It uses a combination of a turbocharger and an electric supercharger mild hybrid setup, which sounds pretty complicated, but it actually produces a really good amount of power. The fuel economy on the other hand is not the greatest. Whichever engine you go with, you're realistically only gonna be able to achieve between 18 and 23 miles per gallon or around 10 to 15 liters per 100 kilometers. Aside from the disappointing fuel economy though, the Defender is a surprisingly nice SUV to drive around the city. Unlike the previous generation Defenders, which were body on frame with live axles, Land Rover made the very controversial decision to move the new Defender onto a full unibody construction with four wheel independent suspension. Although some Defender enthusiasts might take issue with the technological advancements, I think there's no question that the changes that were made were the right decision for the majority of buyers who are just looking for a more comfortable SUV to drive on a daily basis. And that is exactly what the Defender is. This is a very comfortable and easy SUV to drive on a daily basis. Now, obviously I'm not driving the Defender back to back with other off-road SUVs, but I have spent a lot of time behind the wheel of Jeep Wranglers. And I can tell you that this is a huge leap forward in terms of the level of comfort and refinement. I think there's no question that if you're looking for a more rugged, off-road oriented SUV to drive on a daily basis, you're gonna be a lot happier behind the wheel of a Defender versus one of the alternatives. I think there's no question that Land Rover did a very good job with the design of this SUV, and I'm a huge fan of the way this thing looks. 
It has a really rugged, adventurous look to it that's very modern and sophisticated, but it has just enough of the old Defender looks integrated into it, which is a really nice thing to see too. It also has a very impressive interior that somehow manages to look both rugged and off-road, but also very luxurious as well. This interior honestly doesn't feel like much of a step down from the interior of a Range Rover, which can cost a lot more money. Land Rover did an amazing job integrating a wide range of high quality materials with all kinds of interesting textures and surfaces that not only feel very off-road appropriate, but also very luxurious as well. For example, the Defender uses Land Rover's latest touchscreen infotainment system, which has amazing looking graphics and responsiveness. It also comes with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability. Now the interface does take a little bit of time to get used to, but it is a very good touchscreen and has great functionality once you get used to it. I also really like that Land Rover has resisted the urge to go with the more complicated dual screen infotainment system setup that you find in the Range Rover models. Instead, the Defender gets simple buttons and dials for most of your climate controls and off-road controls, which gives you the illusion of simplicity, but it has a lot of features baked into it. The model that I'm testing here, for example, has electronically height adjustable air suspension, a digital gauge cluster that's fully reconfigurable, and a rear view mirror that doubles as a digital backup camera. Now listening to all this advanced technology might be getting you wondering how durable and long lasting is the Defender realistically going to be? And that's a pretty legitimate concern because in the past, Land Rover has been pretty well known for their questionable reliability and build quality. Even Land Rover itself has come out to admit that there's some work to be done when it comes to the build quality of their vehicles. So naturally, that brings us to how well does the Defender stack up against other similar off-road SUVs and luxury SUVs as well. Well, when it comes to pricing, the Defender starts around $50,000 US or around $64,000 in Canada, and that can stretch to well over $100,000 depending on which trim level and options you go with. That means that if you were to go with, say, a mid-level Defender for around seventy dollars to $80,000, you're realistically going to be spending anywhere from fifteen dollars to $20,000 more when compared to a top-level Toyota 4Runner, Jeep Wrangler, or Ford Bronco. Now, that's a pretty reasonable price premium to pay because, like I said, the Defender is definitely a more comfortable and luxurious SUV, so in many ways, you are getting a lot more for your money. But even though the Defender does in many ways justify its higher price tag, it might not end up being the best value. Because Land Rovers don't have a great reputation for long-term reliability, they tend to drop in value much faster than other off-roaders like the Wrangler or 4Runner, which have some of the best resale values on the used car market. In many ways then, the Defender is a more comparable rival to luxury SUVs from brands like BMW, Mercedes, and Audi. What all of these luxury SUVs have in common, including the Defender, is that they are much better suited for a three to four year lease, where you're not gonna to need to worry about their long-term reliability or resale value issues. If you're looking for a luxury SUV to lease for three to four years, I really think this would be a really nice option to go with. I think it's a nicer and definitely a more interesting option than a lot of the other luxury SUVs, and I can definitely see why somebody would go for one. Now, if you're comparing the Defender against the more rugged off-road SUVs, then I really think it depends on where your priorities lie. If you're looking at an SUV for longevity, something to hold on to for the long term that's not gonna cost you a fortune when it comes to repairs, then there's no question about it. The best one to go with is definitely the Toyota 4Runner, which is a much safer option. Comparing the Defender against the Jeep Wrangler or the Ford Bronco, however, I'm not exactly sure which one I would go with. All of them are good in different ways and have a lot of different strengths. I guess I'm gonna have to get behind the wheel of all of them at the same time to figure out which one is best. In the meantime, let me know what you think of the 2022 Land Rover Defender. Would you consider one over other off-road SUVs or luxury SUVs? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also take a look at some of my other car videos by taking a look at these links right over here. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to check out carhelpcanada.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.